So let's move on then to our second panelist. And our second panelist is John McGeevy. And just to say a little bit about John. John is the Justice Officer of the Missionary Sisters of Our Lady, uh, sorry, Our Lady of Apostles. I'm stressing the word missionary because I think that will come out when John makes his presentation. The sisters are very much focused on mission, particularly in Africa, but that doesn't also mean that they neglect, say, what happens at home, whether it's in Ireland or elsewhere. So the word missionary is important, I think, in the title. And John became the justice officer in 2018. And particular attention is paid to women and children and to education and healthcare. And again, very much based on the social teaching of the church. And John has been involved with Evan Rice International in recent times in preparing for the Universal Periodic Review of Ireland, which took place last November. And he worked with Evan Rice International and the Presentation Sisters in preparing that particular submission to the UN. So I think too, one interesting thing is that recently, I believe, John, the congregation joined this Europe African link, Faith and Justice, which is really trying to look at the economic links between Europe and Africa, and maybe the injustices that are there and how that issue can be tackled. So I think it's good that we see again, here's another congregation that has taken advocacy seriously. And I'm welcoming John now to tell us more about that, how advocacy became a pillar of the mission of the sisters, Our Lady of the Apostles. Over to you, John. Thanks very much, Kevin. And thanks very much to ERI for the invitation to speak to you all this evening. Uh, good evening, all. Um, I'd also like to uh, thank the ERI team for making sure that I came after Sister Winifred because I think that was actually very, very useful. Um, what sort of Sister Winifred spoke about, the Good Shepherd Sisters are clearly quite far on in their work, um, whereas the Justice Desk for the OLA was established, as Kevin said, in 2018. So hopefully it'll be useful for everybody, for the audience to see sort of the two perspectives, somebody a little bit further down the line and somebody sort of just starting off in the last couple of years. So I'll just uh, screen share here and uh, you can let me know whenever you all see that. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Okay. And uh, you'll have to excuse my, my uh, Spanish translations. Um, uh, you can blame Google Translate if they're not up to scratch. So uh, as I said, to, I think at, at the beginning, I'm not sure whether uh, Justice Desk translates in the idiom or not, um, but it'll, it'll have to do for now, I'm afraid. So as uh, Kevin said, the, the Sisters of our, our Lady of Apostles or the Missionary Sisters of Our Lady of Apostles are my employer. Um, and uh, the OLA Sisters, as we call them in Ireland, um, were founded in 1876 um, as a missionary congregation to answer the challenge of West African missions. They were established in, in France by, by 19 young women um, from around France, Ireland and elsewhere. And um, they went to mission um, in West Africa and, and elsewhere in Africa and indeed um, to South America and Argentina as well. Uh, <clears throat> so there's a quick picture of some of the sisters currently in, in Tanzania, um, which is actually interestingly a, a province or a a district of the of the Irish province, as it happens. So, um, as Kevin said, the OLA sisters um, have always focused on promoting women and the marginalised in their missionary work um, in Africa and, and indeed elsewhere and at home in Ireland as well. Um, and their work has always been, you know, service work, engaging in education, healthcare, social and pastoral work, and increasingly it's also been interested in peace building around interreligious and intercultural dialogue, which is really, really important for the, the, the OLA sisters. So in terms of JPIC or, or justice, peace and integrity for creation, um, again, we would regard Catholic social teaching as, you know, our foundation um, in our approach, as I'm sure everybody on this call uh, does. Um, and that has always been uh, central to the work of the OLA sisters. Obviously, when you're engaging in education, healthcare, pastoral care, um, for the most marginalized, you are uh, by definition engaging in the promotion of justice, peace, and integrity of creation. Um, 
And while many of the OLA sisters individually may have been engaged in advocacy work as well, um, in 2018, uh, the OLA Irish province decided to establish the OLA Justice Desk um, and employ myself as their justice officer. And I suppose what that did was it formalised the work of advocacy and awareness raising, um, which I now undertake on behalf of the province as a whole. So it shifted it from an individual level to a provincial level. Um, yeah, and I would say that we focus on advocacy and awareness raising and um, while we probably began focusing on awareness raising, we are sort of increasingly trying to focus on advocacy as well. And I'll just talk a little bit about how I see the distinction as we move along. So our strategy or our, our approach to this work um, has been, we decided to focus on three focus areas. Uh, so care for creation, uh, human trafficking, and also a focus on African people of African descent. Um, and that focus on African people of African descent can really be divided into two parts. One is looking at injustices in the relationship between Europe and Africa, um, which obviously is a long colonial relationship um, and one of a lot of economic and human rights um, abuses. And the other then is looking at um, the treatment of people of African descent here in Ireland. Um, and the whole question of race, racism and racial discrimination, which we are hoping to challenge as well. So our approach has been to work collaboratively. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm one person on the OLA Justice Desk. So my work, I work with the sisters themselves, obviously, but also I look to work with other congregations and other organizations, um, civil society groups, et cetera. So, our very close partner are the SMAs, the Society of African Missions, um, and particularly the SMA Justice Office, um, which is sort of my opposite number with the SMAs, Mr. Jerry Ford. Um, we also work with the Presentation Sisters, with the Christian Brothers and the Presentation Brothers as well, um, and indeed ERI. Um, also with community groups like Elders for Earth, which is a group based in Cork in Ireland. Um, and then, as Kevin mentioned, the Africa Europe Faith and Justice Network, or AFGN. And we've been involved in setting up an Irish branch or an Irish antenna of the Africa Europe Faith and Justice Network here in Ireland with, uh, with eight other congregations, focused very much on looking at issues of economic justice between the European Union and uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. And of course, we work with many more organizations as well. But they would be the key people that we work with. And in fact, there's a quick photograph of the recent um, AFGN meeting. So again, in 20, so in 2018, whenever I began this work, um, we sort of spent a while kind of milling around, getting to know the arena, trying to get a sense for what we would focus on, discussing with the sisters, undertaking some workshops to think about what areas we particularly want to focus on. And uh, having chosen our three focus areas, we decided, well, we'll start doing what we know how to do, um, which was awareness raising. And then having done that, we said, well, now we'll need to build our capacity um, around what we don't know how to do. And that's where the human rights advocacy, advocacy comes in. And in fact, again, I can thank ERI. They were very, very useful on that front. Um, and I benefited greatly from participating on their advocacy training in autumn 20, uh, was it 2020. So in terms of awareness raising, um, we sort of follow a calendar pattern, right? You know, over the course of the year. Uh, so in February, we focus on human trafficking. In March, we focus on racial discrimination. In May, we look at Laudato C. In June, we work with the SMAs on their summer school. In August, uh, we again focus on human trafficking. In September, we focus on the season of creation. And then in October, we have, a uh, we collaboratively host the conference on intergenerational climate justice, uh, which began in 2018 um, as, or rather 2019, as an in-person event. And uh, we skipped 2020 because the world was in chaos. And then in 2021, last year, we, we shifted online. So in terms of our actual activities, um, we really work very heavily on social media and on using online platforms. And, and in one respect, we were drawn to that because it's a resource at our disposal. Um, 
On the other hand, like so many others, we were pushed into it by events around the world and by COVID-19 and what have you. So we focus on hosting webinars and online conferences. I've mentioned the SMA Summer School that was online last year. It'll be online again this June, focusing on um, the economics of sufficiency rather than growth. And that feeds into our focus on care for creation. Uh, the conference on intergenerational climate justice, also focusing on um, care for creation, but also bringing in issues around uh, the rights of people in Africa and how uh, people in more marginalized communities are particularly affected by the consequences of climate change. Uh, and in fact, that's a shot from the conference last year. It's a, an intergenerational conference because we bring school groups and community groups so that we have a full range of different ages and generations involved in the conference. Then we also rely on social media to undertake educational campaigns. Uh, so for example, um, not this March gone by, but March, 2021, we actually ran um, a, an online video campaign, drawing attention to the recent um, report on Ireland by the UN Committee for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. Uh, they had raised a list of concerns about Ireland around racial discrimination. And we work with other congregations to host a series of videos during the month of March, uh, which focused on these issues. And in fact, that's a shot of one of those videos. Okay, so moving on then to advocacy. Pardon me. So I suppose the first thing to say is we engage in informal advocacy. And for that, we particularly focus on um, letter writing campaigns and mobilizing people for letter writing campaigns. Um, <clears throat> so in February, we had a webinar on human trafficking. And we ended that webinar with a call to action to our participants that they would uh, download and print um, a template letter we had created and send it to their MEPs calling for action on human trafficking. And likewise, now in May, um, as part of AFGN, we are hosting a webinar which will be looking at the issues of human rights abuses in corporate supply chains. And that will also end with a call to action to our participants. Um, and we'll be inviting them also to print and sign and send a letter to their MEP calling for action on human rights due diligence or corporate accountability law at the European Union level. Now, then shifting into formal advocacy, and I said we had the big, great benefit of working with ERI um, on this, we've been looking now increasingly at how we can use the UN human rights mechanisms uh, to engage in advocacy, and particularly the Universal Periodic Review. So as Kevin said, uh, last year, uh, the OLA Sisters Justice Desk, along with the Presentation Sisters, Christian Brothers and Edmund Rice International, uh, made a submission to the Universal Periodic Review of Ireland. Um, we focused from our perspective on the issue of human trafficking, which is one of our areas of focus, um, as well as the issue of migrants' rights and domestic and gender-based violence, which also is of concern to the OLA sisters with their focus on women. Um, I then subsequently, uh, more recently, um, worked with a, a group in Northern Ireland, in Tyrone, around making a, universe, a submission to the Universal Periodic Review of the United Kingdom. Um, and this was around the issue of mining in Northern Ireland as proposed toxic gold mine. And there's a whole host of human rights issues that arise out of that. And again, that feeds into our concern for care for creation. Um, so it's been very fruitful working in uh, with groups around this issue uh, and in tr trying to use these human rights mechanisms. And going forward, um, we're again working collaboratively with a number of other religious congregations in order to make a submission to the Committee on the Rights of the Child, who are again going to be reviewing Ireland um, in the coming months. Uh, and so that's the next uh, the next action on, on our to-do list. So that's what we've been working on. Hopefully that's of some use to the audience this evening um, or this afternoon, wherever you are. So again, thanks very much, everybody. And
I'll leave it over to you again, Brother Gavin. So thank you very much, John, for that presentation. And just to mention one or two things, I think it's interesting to see how your work has developed even over a short period of four years and the way you've been able to identify key issues you want to focus upon and then gradually look at the informal and the formal forms of advocacy. And, you know, looking back at what Sister Winifred said, her congregation has been on the journey for a longer time and they maybe use position papers, which was their approach. Yours is slightly different, but yet it produces results at the same time. So well done on that. And again, of course, the focus on the girl child and on women's issues comes through in both those presentations. So 